What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. In this video, we're going to be going through the brand newly released Colosseum Shuten Maru. So let's go ahead and talk about the character first, give my thoughts and opinions, and then we'll jump into this Colosseum. So this Shuten Maru is a Dex Slasher powerhouse character. His captain ability will boost Slasher and powerhouse characters attack by 2.75, a 1.2 HP boost, and 5% damage reduction. In terms of a free-to-play captain, he's actually not that bad, honestly. The fact that he is an HP booster and a damage reducer is pretty freaking cool. Uh, unfortunately, the attack multiplier is typically what you'd expect from a free-to-play unit. Now, his special ability is very good as well, so I believe it maxes down at a like a 14-turn cooldown, and it does 200,000 damage to one enemy, and that ignores all defensive effects as well, so that's great. He also reduces your crew's special bind duration by five turns, which is very nice, and also will boost the attack of Slasher and Powerhouse by 1.75 times for one turn. So he's an attack booster and a special bind remover. Fantastic. And then he says, if your captain is a slasher or a powerhouse unit, then he greatly boosts the, the, uh, boosts the chances of you landing on a tandem slot for three turns, and he makes them beneficial for three turns. So... Obviously, that's going to be really nice uh, just for a lot of generic teams, but mainly you can use this guy with the brand newly released Sober Mask or Luffy and Zora. He works under both of those guys, which is pretty cool. Um, for Sober Mask specifically, he doesn't really need a character like this because he can already give himself an attack boost and give himself, uh, give himself tandem slots, so it's not really a big deal for him. But under Luffy and Zoro, this could definitely see play. And even just outside of that as well, he's still an attack booster for two separate classes and a special bind remover with a crewmate ability that also removes special bind on himself. So overall, this Shuten Maru is a very, very good unit. And of course, he does have a support effect, 5% base stats added to any slasher unit. He has Enrage, which 150, and slot bind reduction by five turns. And of course, because of these brand new changes to the Colosseum, this guy will have his own limit break tree that you have have to unlock with his specific materials that are only accessible in the Chaos difficulty version of the Colosseum. So it's going to be relatively difficult to do that, but if you do do that, you do get an additional cooldown reduction as well, which is cool. But remember, you don't need to max that limit break with those very specific nodes in order to rainbow the unit. You can just you can still get all of the limit break abilities maxed out, even without those little um, nodes from the specific Colosseum, so that is all good. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and then jump into the current Colosseum against Shuten Maru. So getting into this Colosseum now, round one is going to be against Okiku and Raizo, but prior to that, there's Bone Kichi and Chopper Emon on stage four of round one. The preemptive attack of 10 turns of uh, delay immunity, also four turns of attack down is going to be inflicted to your team. One turn of special rewind is inflicted to your team, and your health will going to be cut by 20%. And every two turns, they're going to continuously special run, rewind your crew, so you want to make sure to kill them before the end of that second turn, otherwise you're going to have some problems. Now, of course, with this team, this is a free to play team both round one and round two are free to play teams uh utilizing the new luffy zoro as a friend captain makes it much much easier for this fight as you guys will see throughout this uh coliseum so moving on to the final boss stage on stage five uh we have okiku and we have Rizo. both of them have a little over two million hp each there is a preemptive attack of 10 turns of full immunity your entire team is going to be paralyzed uh for two turns uh, i think it's only your left hand side i can't remember either way a uh, character is going to be paralyzed for two turns also the enemies have a, a, a psi slot barrier you have to hit them with a psi orb to break down their barrier which is why i'm using the treasure map shanks as a sub here because you can just double launch his special remove all turns of that barrier makes it a lot easier also your right column slots are going to be changed into badly matching your left hand slots are changed to 10 them, which of course if you're using Luffy Zoro that helps out a lot and every single turn that you're going to get two turns of paralysis inflicted to your team right slots are going to be badly matching left slots are going to be blocked around about 8,000 damage it's just really really bad and especially if you activate any orb changing effect all of your orbs will be changed into either badly matching or block orbs. So yeah, it is kind of annoying, um, but of course, if you have the Luffy Zoro friend captain utilizing their Wano slots, you can get around a lot of the really annoying finicky things in round one. Thank you. 
round number two is relatively challenging. On stage four, there's a mini boss lore with 2.8 million HP for 98 turns. He has a delay immunity. He will also go ahead and orb lock your orbs. Uh, and it's not like the typical orb lock. It's like an orb barrier. So you have to hit perfects in order to un break or to break that or barrier i guess i don't even know what to call this new debuff but anyways once again we're using luffy and zora here to ensure that we have tandem slots or the wano slots so that we can just use those in order to deal pretty good damage here because he does empty your slots when you enter this stage as well and then he'll apply that barrier so it's kind of finicky to make sure to have those wano slots before you move into this room it's going to make, make your life just a whole lot easier for taking on this specific boss fight also your captain is swapped as well uh this particular character that we had added to our um to our captain slot didn't really help out a lot literally any one of the other characters would have been so much more beneficial but either way uh also on turn three he'll either go ahead and apply normal attacks only he'll go ahead and apply special limiter and also he'll run away but if you kill him before turn three he's just going to go ahead and apply the normal attacks only once again and also the remove sfx which is the blindness debuff so make sure to have a character on your crew that has like a five turn blindness reduction at least so that when you move into the next stage and then also including the preemptive attacks that'll actually be fully removed so it does make a pretty big difference here now the final boss stage is against onami and orobi both of these characters have just under 3 million hp each and there is a delay immunity and all poison immunity so you can you can still go ahead and reduce their defense if you do want to go ahead and do that they also both have a one hit perfect barrier and there's going to be six turns of bind is going to be inflicted to your right hand side to two different characters and five turns of paralysis is going to be inflicted to your left hand column here so we can actually go ahead and apply the switch effect of shanks and ben beckman who also have that sailor ability to resist blindness and the okiku from the kizuna special effect to actually remove all the paralysis and the bind which makes a huge difference here and with this team we're able to take down the onami and orobri relatively comfortably So now we can finally get into the main bad boss, the final Colosseum against Shutenmaru. On stage 3 though, we have Kanjuro, who is a dex unit with 3 million health. He has a delay immunity and 5 turns of bind is applied to all of your crewmates and 1 turn of slot bind is, is applied to all of your crewmates. Every single turn, he's going to bind two of your crewmates for four turns and give you one turn of all bind again every single turn and on turn six if he's still alive he's going to blow away both of your captains for four turns and when you eventually kill Kanjiro for five turns he's going to increase the chances of you landing strength x quick and he makes them badly matching for five turns as well pretty annoying to deal with but then you move on to stage four which is very tricky against dog storm and kinemon both have 4.3 million and their preemptive is delay immunity all poison immunity six turns of despair is also inflicted to your team here three turns of of attack down as well one turn of orb block and all of your crew slots are changed to badly matching and every single turn both kinemon and dog storm will attack you twice so they do a lot of damage every single turn and on turn three uh i don't yeah, yeah, both of them will apply 40,000 damage to your team. Yeah, I I'm not, wasn't too sure if it was one of them. But yeah, one of them will apply burn and one of them will apply paralysis as well. So yeah, you want to make sure you get through this stage before the end of that third turn. And also, if you activate any type of special that manipulates your slots around, they will go ahead and change your slots to badly matching. But of course, with Wano slots, that's not really going to be a big issue. So that really um, it just helps, you know, get through the problem, of course. And then the final boss stage against Shuten Maru. He has 20 million HP and a preemptive attack of full immunity, 99 turns of chain coefficient reduction, so make sure to bring a chain locker. Also, one turn of special rewind is inflicted, five turns of percent damage reduction will be on the enemy side of the field, and he also removes all of your beneficial effects. Turn one, he will give you recovery bind and he's going to buff his own attack and below 50% he enrages and gives himself a three turn HP barrier. So don't get him below 50% and when he's below 20% he will just like instantly kill you. So don't get him below 20% either. And his interrupt is if you do any damage to him, he's going to fully recover his health and also give you normal attacks only. So utilizing a bullet special on this stage won't really help you too much, unfortunately. So that's the rundown of the Luffy and Zoro team that was able to go through this relatively comfortable comfortably against Colosseum Shutenmaru.
Moving on to the next team, it is a Sabo and Koala team. And with this team, we have Colosseum Neptune here as a sub. We've also got Pero Sparrow here as a really, really powerful sub, enabling us to get color affinity and cooldown reduction on multiple different stages. We've also got Vivian Rebecca. Vivian Rebecca are just a phenomenal sub in just about every piece of content in the game. They're just exceptional. And we are also running Colosseum, not Colosseum, but Raid Kuma. Uh, Raid Kuma is fantastic here because not only the fact that he is an orb boost that, that we're going to be using on the final boss stage, he's also strength, which gives us type advantage against the Shoot and Maru, but also we can use the Bonnie Rare Recruit as a support effect to remove the bind that gets inflicted here on stage three. So that makes a huge, huge difference for this particular fight here. Um, then we've got the Inuarashi and the Kinim on stage here. We've got Colosseum Neptune. He's one of the best units to use for this particular stage because not only does he remove that despair, but he also removes the attack down that gets inflicted to your team as well. So it's just exceptional to have him available as well as giving you three turns of an orb boost. So, you know, what more could you really want from uh, from a character, man? He's gonna help you a lot in this fight. We're also gonna use Perispera here for the color affinity. And then we can also use the special ability of Sabu and Koala to remove the orbs being uh, counted as non-beneficial to our team. So the, the availability of that, of Sabu and Koala having that really nice utility on top of giving them the buffed captain effect and the attack boost. So for this specific stage, we've got color affinity, attack boost, and we've got an orb boost, and we've got a chain lock from the switch ability of Vivi and Rebecca. So that's more than enough damage to take down both of these bosses here. And then on the final boss stage, because we have Pero Sparrow to reduce the cooldowns of our characters we can just launch the rest of our specials and that's not really going to be a big problem so Sabo and Koala very very comfortable team for getting through this Colosseum Moving on to the next team, it is going to be a double Snake Man team. Once again, Vivi and Rebecca being an exceptional sub, as well as Pero Sparrow, as well as Neptune. These three characters as a core are going to make you just clear this call scene much, much easier. So these three as a core are phenomenal. Of course, you've got Vivian Rebecca being a legend and Pero Sparrow being a rare recruit, but Pero Sparrow has been out for over a year now on Global, so most players that have a decent account should have Pero Sparrow. Uh, and obviously Colosseum Neptune being free to play, but understandably Vivi Rebecca is not, not that accessible, I know. I would understand that. We've also got 6 plus Akainu on this team as well. Um, he's going to be really good for us because on the final boss stage, we can use his special to give us the strength slot as well as giving us the um, attack boost. He gives us the attack boost to our strength units, which will have the double snake man, the Akainu, and Vivian Rebecca, which will be considered as a uh, as a strength unit. So having the four strength characters with an orb boost, with the chain lock, with the attack boost, it's going to be more than enough as well as a color affinity boost as well. Like, yeah, it's more than enough damage to take down Shuten Maru on the final boss stage. And we have one last team to show off in this video today. Oh, my God. 
So the final team in this video is going to be my man, Mr. Slam Jam, 6 plus Katakuri. Now, for this particular team, we do have a very powerful support effect of Neko Mamashi attached to our Pedro. He's going to be really nice to remove that bind that gets inflicted here on stage 3. We've also got Ambush Linlin, -Lin, which is another powerful unit that we can go ahead and use on stage 4 to remove the attack down and the despair that gets inflicted there, which is great. And obviously, the Katakuri special is going to be really good just about everywhere you use it. Beneficial orbs, tap timing bonus, and then the conditional boost in the following turn. He's just exceptional, right? Um, then we've also got Vivian Rebecca once again. Uh, just Vivian Rebecca is just so good. I mean, they're arguably one of the best subs in the game. They're easily top five best subs in the game. Um, then you've got access to the uh, Dofi and Treble, which was a really, really odd unit. But they help a lot here because, of course, on the final boss stage, you get inflicted with 99 turns of chain coefficient reduction. So you do need some unit that can give you a chain lock. And of course, you're able to get that with the Dofi and Treble because they have the 2.75 times chain lock in one turn. And then if you hit your perfects, I think it's three or four perfects, you get the 3.25 in the following turn. So that helps out a lot, getting the chain lock and then the color affinity. Um, we've also got the Megalo ship here, which of course is going to give us the damage reducing effects when we're trying to stall earlier on in this Colosseum. But then we also can use the special ability on this fight to carry orbs into the next room. So it really does make a huge difference here. So anyways, that's going to wrap up this video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below as we are trying to reach 50,000 subscribers very, very soon on the channel. So hopefully you guys can come and help and support as we reach 50,000 subscribers. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.